We've been talking a lot today about the IMF report, the particularly gloomy IMF report released overnight that uh, says the world economy is entering a dangerous new zone, uh, talking about the possibility, the very real possibility, according to the International Agency of both the US and Europe slipping back into recession. But reading into it, it appears that Australia has uh, emerged as one of the few countries that has some kind words said about it in the IMS report. That's right. And uh, we, we look uh, set to try and get through the future difficulties better, really, than any other country. We'll be joined by Wayne Swan very shortly to talk through all of that. But at the same time, though, even our profit uh, downgrades or our situation, uh, our, our situation has been downgraded. And as you know, the London-based magazine Euro Money named their annual finance minister of the year overnight. And the winner was the Federal Treasurer, Wayne Swan. He joins us now from Canberra. Wayne Swan, congratulations. Uh, good morning. Thank you very much, Virginia. When Paul Keating won this award, Shadow Treasurer John Howard rang to congratulate him. Have you heard from Joe Hockey yet? No, I haven't heard from Joe Hockey, but I, I have heard from a number of his colleagues who have been very gracious uh, in their comments. Now, how much of this do you share with Peter Costello? You, you might argue that he left the economy in very good shape for you. Well, I guess there's a couple of points. I guess we share it with governments of the past 25 or 30 years. It's 27 years since this award was last given. So for all of those governments that have uh, put in place the fundamental long-term reforms, uh, including the Howard government, but most particularly the Hawke and Keating governments, they've all played a role. But as you would be aware if you've looked at the award, they have given it specifically for the government's response to the global financial crisis and the global recession. And what I said at the time and what I say now is I pay tribute to really the hard work of millions of Australians, businesses, working families that have contributed to what is one of the strongest developed economies in the world. We're all in it together. We all work pretty well together during that period and we got a pretty stunning result. Now the IMF has warned this morning of a slowing in world growth. What effect will that have on Australia? Well, we're not immune from uh, what occurs elsewhere in the global economy, but we are in the right place of the world at the right time. The IMF has given the Australian economy a ringing endorsement and we will grow stronger than any of the major advanced economies. And as you are aware, economies in the Asia Pacific are growing relatively strongly. So in our region, we can be confident we can deal with these challenges that are thrown up by the global economy, but we're not immune, and if they don't get their act together in Europe in particular, then there will be consequences in terms of global, global growth, and that will flow on to the Asia Pacific and, of course, to Australia. To be specific, what of our banks? Can they remain immune from the turmoil, in your view? Oh, there's no doubt that our banking system is in very, very good shape. It's in great nick. It's stronger now than it was back in 2008, and it was very strong then. Uh, our banks are amongst the strongest in the world. I've talked to our regulators uh, on, a, on a regular basis, and the fact is that our banking system is in tip-top shape and is not impacted upon uh, by these events elsewhere. In your view, what should China's role be in helping out these failing European economies? What role do you expect them to play? Oh, I think what we've got to do through our G20 arrangements is to put in place the global structural reforms in both developed and developing economies uh, that the G20 has been calling for. China is very important in terms of global growth, but we've got to have a rebalancing. So in terms of the strongly growing countries like China, we need a commitment to market-based exchange rates, for example, and we need those countries to really lift their domestic demand. Uh, if they do that, that helps many of the developed economies because it assists them to export more and grow their way out of their domestic fiscal pro problems and challenges. Now, the surplus, as you envisaged it, as you had planned to deliver it, it must be in some doubt now, though, because of that IMF forecast. Well, we're determined to deliver our surplus in 2012-13, but there's no doubt, Virginia, that events in the global economy have made that more difficult. As global growth slows, it does impact on our growth, that does impact on the budget. But the government is pretty determined to bring the budget back to surplus in 2012-13, but that task has been made harder by these global events. Uh, now, look, we've been hearing from some senior business figures. They're urgently calling for more reform to enhance productivity. This IMF warning would seem to make that even more urgent. Do you agree there seems to be a lid on productivity potential right now? And if so, well, what do you think needs to be done to lift that? Well, from day one, the government has had a productivity agenda. There has been a long-term structural decline in Australia's productivity uh, over a long period of, uh, of time, something like a decade or so. What we've got to do is what the government is doing, is making the important investments in skills and education and training and infrastructure, regulatory reform, reform of tax systems and so on. All of those things take time to do, and the government's on the task there. 
Now, Paul Keating compared himself to Pavarotti as the world's greatest treasurer. Which maestro would you say that you were if you compare yourself to one Wayne Swan? Well, I'm not really, uh, I'm not really into, uh, into, into classical uh, music. What I'm into is, uh, is rock and roll, and I'm a great uh, Bruce Springsteen fan. So there you go. <laughs> you know what? This is amazing, Wayne Swan. I picked that. This morning when I was looking at the paper, I thought, he's going to say Bruce Springsteen. There you go. Do we have to start, well, well, do we have to start calling you the Jimmy boss? Jimmy Barnes if you like. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to start calling you the boss. I hope you don't mind. Oh, <laughs> uh, please. <laughs> so is it time for some Xenia suits as well? Uh, Paul's got good taste. <laughs> I just want to briefly, just before I let you go, because I know you've got other pressing things, I want to just briefly return to that surplus. I know that you and I had a go around the kitchen the last time you were on about whether it's playing silly games to insist yeah. on whether you know, that surplus is delivered as promised. Here's the thing as I see it. No one makes you stand up in Parliament at budget time and say, this is what we will deliver on this particular day. So when the media asks you, OK, can't we hold you to that promise, why is that a silly game? Why is it not decent for me to, or reasonable for me to insist today, to simply hold you to words that you yourself voluntarily gave? Oh, because I think we, was, we were splitting words. I don't mind being held to the commitment at all. Uh, the fact is that we made a commitment to bring the budget back to surplus in 2012-13, and if you look at the, Eurozone, the, the, the Euro magazine analysis, they point to the importance of a clear and consistent fiscal policy. The government has a clear and consistent fiscal policy. We are determined to bring the budget back to surplus in 2012-13. The fact is it's got more difficult to do, but we're still determined to do it. We were having a discussion about whether it was a commitment or objective or whatever, the fact is we've been very clear. We're determined to come back to surplus in 2012-13. We're not immune to events elsewhere in the world. But nevertheless, uh, we're going to give it our best shot. Wayne Swan, good to talk to you this morning. Congratulations again. Good to be with you. You were right. Bruce Springsteen it was. I tipped this. Mm. <laughs> the boss, Wayne Swan, with you there.